Hi lovelies, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is books to reread time and time again. We've all experienced this before. An upcoming book gets a lot of attention and hype and we're looking forward to reading it only to discover that it doesn't live up to the advertisements. And after such a book has been read or reread in my case, it either sits on the bookshelf, gets resold, donated, or tossed in the trash. So what qualities actually make a book one that gets read and reread over and over again, such as Pride and Prejudice or the Yellow Golden Books? As someone whose favorite subject in school was English and who constantly has to buy a book when at the bookstore, these are the things that make it or break it for me. The cover art is simple yet catchy. The characters are relatable. The grammar is, well, grammatically correct. There is a clear theme or moral to learn as the reader. And as a reader, I have an emotional bond to the characters and the book's world. Because of my simple yet hefty list of qualities in a book, these are the few titles that get reread over and over again in my book. Elsie's Endless Wait by Martha Finley. It doesn't surprise my family that I named my daughter Elsie after Martha Finley's Elsie Dinsmore. The modern prince of the 19th century series has been my best friend since middle school. I fell in love with a young heroine because, although I live in a separate era, I felt I was Elsie herself. The shy, meek little girl who seeks guidance, love, and support through God made me love not only her, but myself. She also introduced me to the Lord and taught me that I am never truly alone, even though I may feel so. My immediate and forever attachment to the heroine has made this book my top title to reread, and I will read it to my own Elsie one day. Requiem for a Princess by Ruth M. Arthur I discovered this book in sixth grade when the only fun place my parents would take us to was the library. My local library at the time had just a small collection of books, and this 1960s one was still circulating. Sadly, however, the book has been removed since then, and my husband bought me my own copy, thankfully. What drew me to Requiem for a Princess was the fact that there was no physical antagonist. I remember when I told my big sister this, she went, then that's not a book. Every book has a bad guy. Well, the fact that this book was published and there are still readers of Arthur's works today means it is a book. And this book taught me that the bad guy can also be the main character. This is known as man versus soft conflict. This is when the hero of the story is fighting an internal battle with himself, not an external one with someone else. I was hooked. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling Book three makes it to number three. Now, I didn't name book one in the Harry Potter series because that book actually took me a couple years to break into the world of the author. And it was actually Prisoner that made me fall in love with the Harry Potter world. But why? Well, simply because Harry finally has the family he's always dreamed of, or so he thought. I related all too well to Harry and the fact that being the scapegoat of my biological family, I always wanted to be a part of a different family. But like Harry, I can dream, but I'm spending summer break and holidays with people who barely recognize my existence. Oh, and if only I had gone to Hogwarts as well. Being an amateur writer, I have worlds in my head that I'd like to escape to. Rowling's Wizarding World sounds like a fantastic place to be. You know, no pun intended to that. Seeking Persephone by Sarah M. Eden. When it comes to romance novels, I only read two types. Historical and paranormal, specifically about vampires. But why historical romance, though? Because I was born into the wrong era. However, if I were to have been born earlier into, say, Victorian Edwardian America, I would have been a laborer's wife, just producing children and taking care of a house. No big mansion, no ball gowns, no balls to attend. So maybe it's actually a good thing I was born into today's world because I can be a working woman, wife, and mother. The reason I love seeking Persephone so much is that I can relate to both the hero and the heroine. The hero is a hard shell with a soft, vulnerable interior, 
while the heroine is a hopeful soul who sacrifices her own happiness for her family. I can definitely say I have the same character traits. Seeking Persephone is the first installment of Eden's soft romance series, and I have read more of her works, and I love those characters as well. The last book on my list is The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. Dan Brown's bestseller, The Da Vinci Code, became a favorite of mine in high school. It was recommended by one of my English teachers, and it didn't disappoint. I've read it multiple times since then. And what drew me to the book was the immense amount of information that the author poured into his writing as he made all of the action take place in such a short period of time. As the audience member and an amateur writer, I was blown away by the fact that one could do such a thing. It was like magic, but with pen and paper. Phenomenal writing. Oh, and the setting was also a plus for me because I was learning French at the time and looking forward to going to France, which I did by my senior year. These titles and more are very dear to me and get reread time and time again. I'm drawn to the cover art, the characters are relatable, grammar is a must. I've taken away so much in learning from each, and I've bonded with the characters for many years now. I hope you'll give some of these books a read through, as I highly recommend each. But most importantly, I hope you'll find books you'll never want to get rid of, just like me. If you have any recommendations, please list them in the comments. I would love to know what you're all reading. That's all the time I have for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope to see you again in another video. Bye.